<clears throat> okay, guys. So, um, you know, got a question about what I would do. You know, like I said, there's some people that don't want to break the law. You know, there's some people that stick by, hey, look, you know, take it from my cold, dead hands. I, I get that. And I also get, you know, somebody, hey, look, I have a family and uh, it's not worth going to prison and I can't protect them if something happens and I'm, you know, away from all the supplies put aside anyway. I get that. Now, this video we're going to be for those guys that want to have a setup, but, uh, you know, you want to, the, the, basically where things got harder, you're still pretty much covered, right? Can't guarantee it, but even if things got a little more restrictive, you'd still probably be in, in the clear, right? So, <clears throat> not having a crystal ball, you know, I always ask what I would do if I wanted to, you know, be on the safer side of things, but still have a firearm set up. Um, guess I go over this. If I was living in a more restrictive state or country, I'd probably go, you know, I'd go with the, one of these few options I'm going to cover. Now, let's go over a go chest first okay because this i'm going to go over the, what's the same and then we'll go over how it differs later but for now you know i recommend you have a go chest right a rapid response loadout with ammo and extra handgun magazines you keep this loadout vest or, or chest rig or whatever it is belt whatever keep that uh, load out in your go chest with your bug out bag and anything else you'd need if you had to no choice but to bug out right away right that's the last case scenario but you know any medications let's say it's cold you have uh, the right clothing have everything in a chest where you just go to that chest and you're you know you're set up you can even take the whole chest and just throw it in your, you know your car or something right but have everything in one spot not looking around if things get really bad, right? Again, the right clothing, medication, extra glasses I've made. You can check the videos I've made on uh, bug out bags. And, uh, you know, start with that. Food, water, you know, all that. One place ready to go. Now, <clears throat> the second, right, I would recommend for most situations, um... We'll go over primaries, but first, I would say, after you have a go chest set up, you need to get a good 9mm. I recommend starting with a 9mm because just about anybody can handle it, right? The ammo is not overly expensive, so you can afford to train. It doesn't have excessive recoil. So, let's say you have a petite wife or teenage daughter, you know, they may not like shooting 357, man. And besides that, I mean... 357 is, is expensive, <clears throat> right? And another thing is a handgun can be carried on you easily and undetected. Say, you know, WROL, there is no law. Things are just nuts. You never know. Things go south, well, you know, if you absolutely had to, put it in the crack of your behind, put a coat on, and, you know, if it's dangerous just to, you know, go down the street, you know, hey, things are pretty bad, I'm just going to go and, a couple blocks and ask so-and-so for something. I don't know. Well, you can carry it on you, man. Whatever the case may be. Right? So that's a good way to start, I'd say. Now, primaries. Right? My personal first choice, excluding, you know, semi-auto rifles, I would say shotgun. Shotgun is a very, very versatile gun you have several different loads right you got lighter loads like bird shot you know a lot of little pellets that can be used for hunting small game right birds squirrels stuff like that you've got buckshot which is popular for self-defense you know home defense and it it's kind of like shooting somebody with nine nine millimeters i think i said in one of my really old videos if you look at the the uh pellets or the the, uh, what am I saying? Basically, the little uh, pieces of uh, lead, the little ball on there. Well, 
<clears throat> about uh, slipped my mind, but anyway, about the size of a nine mil. So it's like getting hit with a nine mil nine millimeter seven eight nine times. You have slugs, basically a large solid projectile. You know they can shoot right through brick walls. You can take out large animals like bear or something if you had to, right? You've got there's a uh, rubber buckshot and slugs. I mean, you know, non-lethal option. I mean, they're very, very versatile, man. <clears throat> but I just like shotguns personally. Uh, the typical shotgun, you know, holds about five rounds in the magazine tube. You can hold an extra in the chamber for six round capacity, right? There's some out there that hold like seven in the magazine tube. And one in the chamber. That's like my old uh, Maverick 88. It was a security model with a seven-round magazine tube. That would be my first choice, right? A pump-action shotgun, seven-round magazine tube. I would simply put a sling on it and a tack light, right? That's it for, for the moment. And uh, I would have a vest set up with shotgun shells. Or just a simple bandolier, right? A bandolier, 50 rounds, two of them 100 rounds. You can just grab them and go, throw them off, trade them, whatever you need to do, right? That'd be a simple, cheap way to do it. And, you know, like uh, the old pistol arrow looking, you can have two bandoliers and that's that's 100 shells on you. That you can just grab and go, if need be. Or, like I said, a vest with everything, right? you know, you would have ammo, you'd have... Uh, extra magazine uh, for your handgun right some other some other stuff in there whatever that work you know whatever works for you uh <clears throat> compass maps whatever you would like to have in that vest you know in that kind of situation it's up to you you know teach their own you put whatever you want in your vest but that's what i would do uh and keep that vest or whatever the bandoliers in the with it with a gold chest in the gold chest with your bug out supply Right now, shotgun shells are, are bulky, so you can only carry so many. That's going to be the drawback. Now, another way to go about it would be a bolt action rifle. Right, personally, um, right, thirty out six, something like that for me. And there's there's other calibers. You, know, you can go with a little, little, just old Mosin if you want something real cheap. But I would say get a good uh, bolt action rifle with a good scope. Same thing, a sling on there because. You know, get tired of carrying stuff around all day, man. Get a few bandoliers, load them up with some ammo. Same thing, keep them in your go chest, right? You got them at the ready. And uh, even if you have like a small magazine, hey man, you can just, you know, you got the, the ammo on the bandoliers. You can just load them up as you go, right? You would have a very powerful cartridge that can reach out and touch someone, right? You can carry a fairly decent amount of ammo. Now, the drawback would be the slow rate of fire, right? Shotgun, you can, you know, pretty much fire as quick as you can pump and pull the trigger. So you got a faster rate of fire, but not that much range. The bolt-action rifle, you're going to have more range, but a pretty slow rate of fire. And not a very large capacity either. A little less. I mean, the shotgun's not going to have that much either. But, you know, um, seven in the magazine tube and then one in the chamber. You know, eight. Rifle, we're probably looking at five or six. I mean, not a huge difference. But, I mean, it's a little bit quicker to reload that shotgun. Uh, anyway, and the other way, <clears throat> which probably at least on my list, not because I'm against it, but... A 22 rifle, right? In my situation, I would say if I was living in Cali or some really restrictive place, I'm worried about laws getting harder. You know, I want to be within the, you know, confines of the law, but still have a setup. I would personally get the seven-round shotgun, sling, tack light, and a vest set up for me. And for my wife, I would probably do the uh, like a. The bolt action, give her a bolt action, uh, or a 22 rifle. Decent little scope, same thing as sling. 
You can use it for hunting or even self-defense, man. I mean, 22 is no joke, especially with an accurate shot, man. You can easily carry hundreds of rounds of quality 22 ammo. 22 is not a super loud round, right? And uh, But the drawback would be, you know, the wind can bounce that round all over the place, man. Um, so there's, you know, the range would be kind of limited with that too, to a point because of the wind, you know, bouncing it around. But, um, you know, if you want to put a tactical setup together, I'll leave everything you need in the description bar. Um, you know, Molly vest and, uh, bandit or stuff like, stuff like that, especially with a scatter gun, a good old shotgun. And, uh, yeah, you know, put your own, put your own vest together and put it aside. I wouldn't say, you know, that if you hear somebody break a window or something, you go and you put your vest on. This would be just a total SHTF situation, man. Not just, you know, break in. Break in, you grab your shotgun, right? And there you go. You've got five to seven rounds in the magazine, Right, maybe you have one in the in the chamber, maybe not. But either way, you know, you can have five, at least five to seven rounds in that shotgun. So you'll be fine just with that. Um, but in a real SHTF, you want to have stuff where you can just grab and go because that may be all you can get. Um, you know, let's say you have it in a duffel bag, right? You may only have time to get what's in that duffel bag and go. So you want to have it ready. We've seen riots happen and all kinds of stuff happen, right? And, uh, you know, I believe an economic collapse is going to happen eventually. It's going to hit the U.S. You know, it could be anything. I mean, we can't spend our way to wealth. Our debt's getting worse. I mean, things are not getting better. They're actually getting worse. And they're going to continue to. I mean, you cannot borrow and spend forever. Fiat currencies always fail. There's just never been a reserve currency fiat before. But uh, they usually take, what, 27, 20, something like that, years. I mean, but it's never spread around the whole world before. So we'll see, right? Also, I mean, you never know. Just riots, they happen, just sporadic, something happens, and there you go. So you may be in that situation, but you also want to, you know, be within the law. That's what I would go with myself. Anyway, hope that helps, guys. Um, you got questions. You know, leave uh, questions, comments, and you got uh, suggestions, man. Really, you guys in California and Canada, you should make response videos. Post them on here. Post them on this video. I'll approve them. Right? Leave your ideas because I live in Texas. But, you know, I'm just giving my ideas. I always ask my opinion, so I'm going to give it. But, you know... Show us your setup, man. What are you guys doing? And other people watch it and learn, man. I mean, you know, we're all in this together. Anyway, hope that helps, you know, and uh, y'all have a good one. But do what you can while you can because it's just going to get harder and more expensive. All right, guys, I'm out. You yeah, have a good one.